Welcome back to Edumon Tutorials. I am Vidya, your instructor for database management systems. In our last class, we have discussed database design and ER diagrams. And in today's class, we are going to discuss the next two topics in your, our unit 2. And they are the entities, attributes and entity sets along with relationship and relationship sets. So let's get started. Entities, attributes and entity sets. What is an entity? An entity is an object that is distinguishable from the other objects. An entity can be a physical object like a student, employee and it can also be a conceptual object like an organization, a company, university as well. For example, I am taking a college database where I have different entities like professors, students and the courses. And in an ER diagram, I represent like we represent the entities with the help of a rectangle. Attributes. An attribute describes the characteristics of an entity. What are the characteristics? They are the mere properties of an entity. For example, if I take student, I use the properties like the student ID, his name, his address and age to describe the student, right? So these are the attributes. For an employee, there can be attributes like employee ID, his name, the, his salary and e address as well. Here each attribute is represented using an oval in our ER diagrams. And one entity can have any number of attributes describing the properties of that particular entity. And each attribute can have a set of permitter values which is called the domain of that particular attribute. For example, here uh, I have a student ID uh, where which is basically an integer. So I can only take integer values that is the domain of the student ID is the integer value. So we have the different types of attributes. Sorry I missed it in this paper so I am explaining it separately. We have three basic classification of the types of attributes. The first type is uh, simple and composite attributes. If the attribute uh, can be further divided into uh, different attributes, then it is called as a composite attribute. If it cannot be divided, it is called as a simple attribute. For example, I, take, I can take the name of the student as single attribute as well in the simple composite. And I can further divide the name uh, as first name, last name and middle name. Here this is a composite attribute. In an ER diagram, I represent uh, the way I have drawn it here. But uh, when we are considering it, when we are transforming it into a table, I will not include something called name. Here I will have only three column names. That is first name, last name, middle name. And I will not have any column name called name. Okay. So the next classification is key attribute and non-key attribute. Uh, an attribute that uniquely identifies each entity in the entity set is called as a key attribute. So it is called the primary key. So here the student ID or the role number of that particular student uniquely identifies each student in the student entity, right? So this is a key attribute. And all the other uh, attributes other than the key attribute are called the non-key attributes. Say like name, age, uh, address and all the other except the role number that identifies the student uniquely. The third classification is a single valued attribute and a multi valued attribute. The attribute that has only one value that means it can take only one value will be a single value and the attribute that can take more than one values will be termed as a multi valued attribute. For example, uh, I can belong to either CSC or electronics or civil or mechanical which is my branch. So I can only have uh, one value for my branch that is either CSC, uh, ECE or civil. Whereas address can take three values. It can be like it, it should have locality, the pin and town as well. So in an ER diagram, we represent the multi-valued attributes with uh, double ovals like this. I, the way I have drawn it here. And we can also have emails like some companies ask for a primary email and secondary email. That means we are taking two multi values for a same single attribute email. So this completes the types of attributes. So let's get back to our uh, actual page. Next entity set. It is a collection of entities sharing the same set of attributes. But you should make note of this point that all the entities share, share the same set of attributes yet they have different set of values. And all entities can be distinguished identically in an empty set. For example, here I've taken an example, SID name and course. Here student is my entity and collection of student uh, will be the 
entity set i have three students vidya priya and sia and they have uh, different values for the same attributes like sid name and course this is how an entity set is represented in a tabular form and then we have the types of entity sets the two types of entity sets are weak entity set and a strong entity set a strong entity set is an entity set that has a primary key or a primary attribute that is used to identify each entity in an entity set uniquely for example in a student table i have a student id for identifying each student uniquely and in an employee table i have employee id as well here when we have to represent it in an er diagram the strong entities are represented with the primary key attributes underlined uh, that means the text in the primary key attribute is generally underlined to represent that it is a primary key and the entity set having a primary key will be called as a strong entity set coming to weak entity set uh, the entity set that does not have a primary key is generally termed as a weak entity set as i said there is no primary key so how are we going to uh, identify each entity uniquely we have a solution for that as well so to for identifying each entity uniquely the weak entity is generally so the weak entity depend on the other strong entity for its existence so weak entity is said to be existence dependent and the relationship between a strong entity and a weak entity is said to be identifying relationship and we formulate the primary key by combining the partial keys that are used in the weak entity along with the primary key of the strong entity so i have taken an example section which has two entity sets section and course in section i have section id year and semester in course i have course id and name here i have underlined the course id representing that it is a primary key so course is generally a uh, strong entity so in section i have section id year and semester and none of them are unique because uh, i can have values for section id like third year fifth semester of sixth semester and i can have the same section id for each of the courses available in a college for example i can have for csc ec mechanical and civil same section id that is a uh, fifth semester or sixth semester right so the section id is clearly a weak entity as it does not have any primary attribute so it has to depend on the course id which has a course id that uniquely identifies each course available in the college along with its name so here for identifying one student in a college i use a set of keys and term them as a primary key here i should include all the partial keys that are available in the section id along with the primary key of the strong entity so for my key for this example will be the course id plus the section id year and semester so i'll tell a student belong to csc and he is from third year sixth semester that defines a student uniquely so this completes the entity sets and entities so let's see uh, the relationship and relationship sets a relationship is a basic uh, association among two or more entities that means uh, how we can relate two entities for example in the university database we usually have many associations among the entities uh, in our example a student enrolled in certain courses and the student here is described by some attributes like sid name and he is related to the course that means he is enrolled into the course right so here enrolled is the relationship between the student and the course we have descriptive attributes so attributes that describe the relationships for example here the student is enrolled in the course we can have the batch like uh, does he belong to the 2019 batch 20 batch or 21 batch here i am using a attribute for defining the relationship between so these attributes these special attributes are called the descriptive attributes now relationship set a set of relationships of same type is termed as a relationship set for example it is a relationship between the uh, entity sets two different entity sets here i have a student entity set and then a course entity set and i have a relationship among them which is enrolled some student one is enrolled in some course 2 and other student s2 is enrolled in course 3 and s3 is enrolled in s1 this is how a relationship set is represented we have two more important things to discuss in this relationship sets they are the degree and the types of relationship sets so degree is the number of entity sets participating in a relationship depending upon the degree we can classify the relationship into four types 
unary binary ternary and anary in a binary relationship uh, there will be one entity participating or associated with only one entity one relationship for example one person can be married to only one person right so in binary there are two entities associated with single relationship for example the students enrolled in a course employees working in a company these are all the binary relationship and in ternary we have three entities participating in the relationship for example an employee working in certain company at certain location uh, he can be working in uh, tcs in hyderabad he can be working in tcs from bangalore so there are three entities location employee and the company and there is a relationship that is working in you can also have an array where you will have n number of entities are uh, associated with single relationship so next uh, is a types of relationship sets now that we have classified the relationship depending upon the degree here we will consider something called cardinality what is cardinality cardinality is the number of instances of an entity in an entity set that can participate in the instances of another entity set simply the number of entities that can be related to how many number of entities in another entity uh, we have four different types of relationships depending upon the cardinality ratios the four classifications of many to many many to one one to many and one to one many to many any number of uh, entities in an entity set can be associated with any number of entities in the other entity set so here in our example a student enrolled in course one student can be enrolled in any number of courses here i am considering the courses to be the computer courses like java c c++ so he one student can be enrolled in any number of courses and one course can be enrolled by any number of students next uh, type is many to one so uh, the same example the student enrolled in branches here the branches are csc uh, ece mechanical and civil so one student can enroll in at most one branch whereas one course can be enrolled by any number of students so this is a many to one relationship where the students can enroll in only one branch and the branch can have any number of students so the third classification is one to many here um, this is a um, relationship between the employees and department one employee can be associated with any department he may be working in two or more departments but each department is managed by only one employee who will be his manager fourth classification is one to one here it is clear that only one instance can be associated with the one instance of other entity set so one company can have only one ceo and one ceo can be associated with only one company at any given time so this is the classification of relationship depending upon the cardinality so this completes our today's class and i'll meet you in our next video where we will be discussing the additional features of er model along with the conceptual design with er model so stay tuned thank you